Hi, thanks for tuning in. In this video, we're going to review how I use the PPO indicator. PPO stands for Percentage Price Oscillator. It's a technical momentum indicator that shows the relationship between two moving averages in percentage terms. Uh, and the moving averages that we're using here are, uh, you can see at the bottom of the 12 to 26, and they're EMAs. Um, and you know, I think what a lot of people fail to realize is that these indicators aren't like, hey, when it gets to a certain level, you buy, and when it gets to a certain level, you sell. I've seen traders do that, and you just you don't really get anywhere with that. That's not the goal of what you use these indicators for. Um, the goal of these indicators is, is try to help you understand when the momentum is uh, waning and when the momentum is uh, uh, you know, increasing. And over time, what you'll find out is, you know, uh, I mean, it, it, the market moves in waves and uh, the intensity of these waves increase and they decrease over time. And generally, you know, you can combine this with Elliott wave and, and give yourself a good picture of, of you know, how how you can take an indicator with with the wave structure uh, to try to to identify major highs and lows. Um, and yeah, that's what that's what we're going to talk about today. And those those almost always come in the form of these divergences. Uh, these divergences can go on a lot longer than you think. I'll show you a, a couple examples uh, of of the major indexes where that's true. Uh, but we'll start here with Nvidia. So yeah, uh, Nvidia back in the March March uh, you know collapse the COVID COVID collapse um, went from you know eighty bucks to forty five bucks, a little fifty percent haircut. On the way down, if you if you go back and look in time, right, uh, the momentum here was lower than the momentum here. So she set she set a higher high, which is good. That's what you want to always see. Um, and as soon as that happened, she sent a lower low, right? This divergence that was worked on, this higher high, higher low, um, was actually broken back here. So you see the one one four uh, and one three one. So here, even though price had a higher low, the momentum broke. So that was your first clue that this this uptrend was weakening. It had also pulled back to the 40 um, and closed below the 20. So you could tell the intermediate trend was dying. But more importantly, there was this divergence in price. Um, and then again, this acceleration uh, momentum curled down, histogram rolled over, PPO bearish cross, where you have this uh, blue line cross below the red line. And that pretty much set the tone uh, for that correction. Uh, and, and, and the way that I look at these indicators, especially the way I use PPO, is that when you see this momentum leave, um, in this particular case, you know, uh, 15 days straight up, followed by a loss of the 10, a gap and go on volume, uh, PPO bearish cross, you gotta wait for this to at least get to the zero line before you consider going long again, and then wait for the histogram to round off. Uh, because you can tell here, like, okay, she tried to round here, but when you lost this this candle's low, which came here, right, you got acceleration to the downside. So the PPO, uh, you could have just done a simple uh, trend indicator of, hey, the momentum is, is waning and, uh, you know, the, the momentum indicator is showing us that in the form of a bearish cross. Uh, let's abort this trade until we get to momentum return, which would have been about here. Now you would have noticed, hey, we got stopped out here, we bought back here. Well, that's just the way it is. Sometimes you buy back higher, sometimes you buy back lower, sometimes you buy back right where you sold it. It doesn't really matter. Uh, so yeah, that, that being said, the divergences are, are what you use to kind of try to identify these, these major high and lows. Um, here's here's another one that that you know did not exist right so like here's a high in price here's a high in price here's a higher high in price and a higher high in momentum so this high and this high told you right away that the bulls were here and printing above uh, the momentum from that high and even here right this is where you had the divergence start to come into play. This is 659 on the PPO, and this is 666. So the high here had more momentum than the high here. Um, yeah, so this is just how we use the divergences, right? I'm looking at price, 
I'm comparing the momentum. Um, is it higher or lower than previous major pivots? Full stop. You know, and, and if you start to train your eye to do that on these charts, you'll start to see some of these patterns over and over and over again. And how at major tops, like Bitcoin's a great one that we can look at here. Um, you know, we'll pull up Bitcoin right away because everyone loves Bitcoin. Oops, sorry about that. Got it here. So, you know, this top here in momentum was met uh, with another high here on lower momentum, with another high on lower momentum, another high on lower momentum, right? So that divergence, every time we printed a new high, it was on lower momentum. You can see that in the histogram. You can also see, I love, I love to see this, right? Um, the time between here and here, and the time between here and here is shrinking. So you can see it almost in time that like the bulls are becoming exhausted, right? This thrust higher uh, is, is the greatest, and that came in wave three, which is the peak here. The thrust higher, not as high, not as long in time, and not as high as, uh, as this run here uh, in momentum. And then the third run is even even on less momentum. So you can tell the bull is becoming exhausted and you can see it in price. And you had the same thing happen here on, on, on the bottom side. We'll, we'll clear off a lot of this stuff from the chart so you can see what's going on. Um, but you had the same thing here, right? So when we hit this low, you had this momentum start to come in. That The actual low was here, right? But again, this is a higher low in price relative to a lower low in momentum. And then here we set another low in price and a higher low in momentum. And this is what creates the higher low divergence that you need to see at these major pivots. Uh, and even here again, right, we broke the low again. So this is the third time again, power of three. Uh, and you can see it in the bear thrust too, right? So the bears start coming in, they can't really get anything going. They can't get anything going. They start to get something. This is a big move. And then the third one was not nearly as big as the others. So, you know, you have this divergence take place where like over time, the, the bears became exhausted and you can see it in price and time. It's kind of awesome. But ultimately, this series of lower lows in price and higher lows in momentum uh, le or what led to um, uh, the bottoming process and ultimately what led to bears capitulating. That's what's happening, right? You're seeing that uh, the, the algos are determining they can't get any lower in price and that over time that, that leads to, to cover. Uh, and we'll take a look here at, at one, more, uh, one more of these divergences because you see them everywhere, right? This is one that we've seen on, on SPY for a long time, right? The high high for SPY was put in in June 2020 in terms of momentum at 322. Ever since then, every one of these highs has been on lower momentum. Every single one of them. So it becomes, it becomes very, very hard to buy up here from a daily time frame standpoint. But if you start to zoom out, the weekly has that picture as well, right? This high on May versus these now, we have a declining uh, momentum indicator with a rising price indicator. That's the opposite of the Bitcoin setup that set up the bottom. This is what's setting up the top, in my opinion. Uh, that being said, we're still long. Um, you can ride the 10, ride the 20. Uh, you know, and, and again, really anything down to 400 is a strong buy. Um, it's that simple. So yeah, this is how we look at these indicators. And I guess we'll just wrap up here by looking at the monthly and say, oh, no divergence here at all. So the daily and weekly divergence that you're seeing could still resolve bullish because the monthly time frame has a positive um, indicator. And look at how long 
this can remain positive. Even after momentum died, she continued to rise for another nine months. So people love to call tops like they know what's what's going to come here. I, I don't I don't see that. Let let the indicator roll over like you have here and that will be a higher probability top environment. This is not a high probability top environment. Okay? All right, same thing here. Look at how strong that is. All that meant is that every dip has a high probability of being bought. So let's go back um, one last time here to the NVIDIA chart and we'll take a look at the third way that I use these, um, which is uh, for Elliott Wave. So what we wanna see um, for every one of these is for wave one, right? the direction to go with the trend. So this is your wave one and the PPO is going the direction of the major impulse or the major trend. Wave two is always going to kind of reset the PPO towards towards the zero line. Um, but again, that happened here, only got to three and then left. So doesn't necessarily have to happen. Um, uh, you don't have to go negative. You don't even have to make it to the zero line. Uh, but the objective is, is that you cross bear and that there is some pullback towards the zero line. Um, in this particular instance, you know, momentum was so, or, you know, the bulls were so strong, momentum increasing, you never got this dramatic pullback to the zero line uh, until November. And by that time, right, you were still five months away from the actual bottom in price. Um, so it's not as simple as, well, it's at the zero line. No, no. no. The, the objective here is that wave two is the PPO moves in the direction of the counter trend. So if this is your one, two, three, four, five, and there's your running flat two, your PPO moved in the direction of, uh, of the uh, correction. So for wave three, you're going to have the steepest. Uh, right here is your, I think your wave one of three, uh, three of three, five of three, something like that. Um, and your PPO is the highest on the daily, no doubt about it. Um, and that is also true on the weekly. Uh, when you go look at these charts, right, you, you, you know, you want to find where the PPO is its highest. And that's your wave three. So even looking back here, wave three for NVIDIA could have been back here in December 2016. And this is all some wave five. Um, I don't really know. But that's that's what this is telling me and that this is a wave three of wave five right here. So one, two, three, four, five. That's how I'm counting this, and that's the PPO. And and, and, and and ideally the last the last way you look at the the final two, wave four is PPO resets to zero line and goes negative, and wave five is where PPO goes back in the direction of the dominant trend, but sets a lower high. And that's what we're looking for here. So the question we're gonna see here with NVIDIA uh, very, very soon, or this year into next year, is whether or not she can break this high here in momentum that was set. And if she can, are we going back here to challenge this high? And if we are, that means this is wave three and all of that was wave one. So, you know, it's hard to tell um, you know, where where ultimately price is going but you can you can bet the direction of the trend and you can use these indicators to tell you when the momentum is increasing or decreasing and ultimately that's all we're doing um, we're trying to to take the, this piece of uh, this tool and generate information that can be used to build plans um, and and ultimately recognize that the probability of a major top coming when there is a divergence, when PPO is rolled over on the higher time frame charts like the monthlies, etc., is much greater than if PPO is is roaring, you know, uh, positive and, and and not bearish at all, um, and that that you know all of these divergences start on the highest time frames and they resolve all the way down. So. That's it. That's all I got for this video. If you like the content, hit the subscribe. Uh, come check us out on Twitter at MarketWizard87, and we'll catch you in the next video.